Bobby Rezek. Um, another episode with Shift with Josh Gross. I've known Josh Gross for like 15 years. Um, honored to have him on an episode of Shift. Josh, how you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Josh, what is it about the sport of mixed martial arts that you have connected with? Why MMA? Why combat sports? You know, I don't know. I think initially... Um I was attracted to MMA just in the sense that it was this underground thing. I mean, being in Southern California, being right. in LA, it was definitely a place in the world where people were doing this stuff. And you're you, going back 2000, 2001. You know, late 90s. Right. Um, I started going to a lot of fights like in the late 90s, 97, 98, 99. Uh, 2000, and then I started writing in 2000, and so I stopped going as a fan and just started going covering as a reporter. Um, I don't know. One, I mean, I just think it's an amazing sport. Uh, the action is completely captivating. Right. Um, but I grew up loving combat sports. I mean, I grew up being a boxing fan, so and a huge sports fan. Uh, okay, so you always connected to combat sports as a well young man, young boy growing up. It was something you kind of reverberated with. Well, to sports, I did for sure. And part of that was boxing, I mean, the, the combat sport that when I was growing up, I mean, when you were Tyson, Tyson, I think, was the first guy that really, I mean, I guess I kind of remember Sugar Ray Leonard, but like Tyson was the first guy of my youth, of yeah, my era. Ray Leonard was, when Tyson was coming in, Ray was going out. Right. So yeah. the guy that I really remember and the guy that I remember seeing, like, uh, you know, in Sports Illustrated and the cover of the National and like on all the sports pages was Tyson. Um, and so he was just, a, you know, unbelievably compelling figure yeah and you know i had no i had no sense when i was around mma i, I mean i trained and i did everything that i'd be working in it i didn't right. i didn't envision that it wasn't something i ever wanted so um when i s sort of discovered the idea that i could do that it just seemed to just happen naturally and normally i never walked into this thing saying this is my goal this is what i'm gonna do um you know, I, I didn't. I didn't have that in my head. Uh, I just kind of went along for the ride. You know, right? And um, yeah, it, it's taken me a lot of places. It's been fun. So, you like combat sports because? Um, I mean, you know, sort of the, the basic cliche answers are true, right? I mean, the the test of wills. You know, the seeing what human beings are capable of, the adversity that they're willing to walk through. Um, yeah, it's like a my, each fight has a micro story to it. It can it's like a story, or it, it can. It, yeah. it can for sure. I mean, I even if it's not a compelling fight, it's still like a. I always feel well, like you always, you always, an arc. Look, you always have to respect people who get in there and fight. Mm -hmm. You always have to respect, no matter what the fight looks like, no matter what the outcome is. Um, the idea that people are willingly doing that, and that you know we get to participate in it by watching, mm -hmm. I think, is something that. Not enough people respect. Right. Um, you think people don't respect the fighter enough, or for sure, for sure. I think I think most fans don't respect athletes enough. Period. But especially when you're talking about a sport where the price for participating is so high and it's so obvious. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, from what I've heard from fans over the years, is that yeah, most people have no idea the cost, the toll, the price of doing this for a living. You know, it affects everything for you, everything. Yeah, it, it becomes, I mean, it changes your life. It becomes your life. And yeah. not because like it's some counterculture thing and you're into it because it's just really interesting. It, it has to be your life for you to be successful at it. It's a crazy profession. And, you know, I remember watching these guys when there was no money mm -hmm. and they would just fight. Right. Um, and that always captivated me. I was like, what's, I mean, you asked like what, interested me about MMA. The people doing it interested me. Their stories really interested me. How open they were. Yeah, that's were. true. I mean, back in the day, in, a, in the late 90s, early 2000s, there was no money to be made. But these guys well, took it like a career, professionally. I mean, but... Go to all the gyms. Look at the, 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 Pride Grand, the Pride Grand Prix, man. There was money to be made. You know, there's... But the top echelon. Of course. Well, but that's always been the case. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're at the top of the class at anything, that's where the money's made. Right. Um, I think... Hello? You, seems to be going on here in front. Uh, downtown LA, uh, late on a Friday night. But that's pretty uh, interesting there, right, Josh? What do you mean? The one in the blue. <laughs> I'm digging the one in the blue. What do you think? Uh, she's lovely, Bobby. That was stunning. I'm not going to say anything to get me in trouble. Let's go. Hello, this woman. 
Yes, madam. No, we're uh, we're shooting for Tesla. Uh, we're shooting a Tesla commercial. Thank you. Shooting you a like Tesla. you you like shooting a Tesla commercial. You like messing with people. That's <laughs> one thing is I've gotten to know you more, Bobby. You definitely like to screw with people. Why do I like to screw with people? What, what, where's is the that a rhetorical question or what do you? you know I mean? like, why don't you answer your own question? What is the psychological makeup of why I'd want to screw with people all the time? Why do you think? <laughs> You're a pretty good analytical individual with psychologically breaking people down. Why do I want to do that for? For your amusement, I mean, generally. Is it always amusement based? 95% of the time. 95% of the time. The other 5% I haven't figured out yet, so I don't know. No, you, I think it's you, tell, you tell me. I think it's all amusement based. I think I, I, think yeah. I had that natural joker spirit in me since I've been very for sure. young. You like to screw with people. I know this. You've you've tried to pull it on me a couple times. You can't now because like I'm too aware of what you do, and I'd like, I just blow it up right away. Right. So well, what have I did to try to screw? What would I? What would I? Uh, you just say inappropriate stuff, Bobby. You're just an American, you see? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, How are you finding this Tesla, by the way? That's good. It's the car of the future. It's a prototype of the future. Yeah, it's here now. I mean, what future? Where this is like this is real I mean, right now. I mean, in the future, all cars will be electric. And this display is pretty serious. It's incredible, isn't it? It's yeah. almost like a cockpit for an aircrafter it's got a lot of that i mean i i wish it's, we could it's open probably it. a tv too I'm sure. I'm sure i wish we could open it up you know you want can we hit the gas uh, oh you would open up yeah yeah let's go somewhere and open it up yeah. you, could, you, know, you know downtown la basically every car commercial you see now uh -huh. it's downtown la i know i know i know I'm you know but yeah. like uh, you know if, if people are like are watching like they literally everything is downtown la <laughs> the whole world you know what, actually a good place actually if you go down your road to that bridge where the lamps are. What, what uh, bridge is that? That's kind uh, of there's a few of them. There's a few of those old bridges. That's a very visual. Yeah. Uh, how often do you go? To, how often do you hang down uh, Skid Row, by the way? How often do I hang in Skid Row? Yeah. Do you ever just walk down there, take I've, the dogs? I've done that. I've done that for sure. Um, you know, it's part of the neighborhood. I think if you act like it's not there and you're oblivious to it, that's wrong. Is there like? Uh, is there like anything to be? Are you in danger when you go there? Or? I never felt it. Um, no danger at all? Uh, I mean, there's, well, you know, I'm not act like I'm some tough guy and I don't feel danger. I mean, sure, it's like the right. I remember driving, when I was probably 16 and I just started driving, I went right. to a Dodger game with my friend, uh -huh. a good friend of mine, Phil. Right. And we got lost driving back and we ended up in Skid Row. And I just remember being scared out of my wits. <clears throat> like, just scared to death. Back then it could have been, that was how many this, years ago? <sighs> 24 years ago? So I felt like, because 24 years ago, there was no Ace Hotel oh, no, no. around here. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, I mean, it, de it did feel like something out of, like, a zombie apocalypse way before, like, yeah. any of that stuff was popular. Because there wasn't any gentrification back then, right? Not really. I mean, no, th this, exactly. this was, uh, like, a garment district. This is where business was done as far as all that goes. Um, this was not a place where people lived. Not really. I mean, my mom worked in fashion, and she... She worked in all sorts of buildings down here, and uh, in fact, she had an office uh, up here where, where, the, where the Ace Hotel, Ace Hotel is now. Is, yeah, wow. um, and I, I think I came down here once in a while, rarely, but it was a totally different environment. I mean, this this we're on Broadway now, and this whole section down Broadway is in, insane in terms of what they've done and built up. And even since I've left, it's insane. Yeah, it's. In uh, I mean, I've, li I've lived downtown for three years. In the last three years, it's been a huge difference in terms of the kinds of businesses that are coming in, the amount of people that are here. Um, You've lived in longer, you live longer in downtown in three years? Mm, three, not quite three and a half years. Really, yeah? Yeah. Where was you living for, West Hollywood or? No, Miracle Mile. <laughs> I did live in West Hollywood for a while. <laughs> what, do you, what, 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 kind, what kind of joke is that? <laughs> What's wrong with West Hollywood, Bobby? Why is West Hollywood I'm funny? I'm just joking. I was just trying to count. I was trying to do the subtle British humor thing. But you caught it, though. You're smart like that. You caught it. Yeah, I got you. Um, Broadway, since I... How long have I been gone? Two years? No. Not that, gone, not that long. Like how long two, did you live in Marina? Two years? Yeah, it's been two years, yeah, almost. And then I had a little brief... It's crazy how hotels. time flies. Yeah, no, bro. 100% I was gone two years. There was no Ace Hotel. There was nothing in Broadway when Ace, I left. Ace opened uh, just over a year ago. Yeah. There was nothing. There was no Ace. There was no... Uh, Tanners, there wasn't those coffee shops down there. There's another coffee shop where you live. All this is, uh, all this has come up. Yeah. 
Uh, what interesting projects you have coming up? What books you have coming up? Anything interesting coming up? Um, what's been going on with Josh Gross? Yeah, so 2014 um, was a, like a foundational year for me. Like I think I put a lot of time into projects that I really had a lot of interest in that I want to invest my energy into. Um, so I made no money in 2014. I was broke. Right. You know, I was kind of like living off that ESPN money and you know scrounging to get by. Mm -hmm. um, 2015 feels like a lot of potential. I'm going to do a book on Muhammad Ali, uh, his match with Antonio Noki in '76. It's amazing how few people know about it. Yeah, it's a, it's really kind of it's lost in history. It is lost in history, and that alone is interesting to me. But uh, the amount of angles that I can take based off that story. I mean, this is 76, so this is Ali at the height, right? Yes. This is This is superstar Ali. Beatles. Uh, even, uh. even like, even after Beatles, like, he was bigger than that. Uh -huh. This was him, like, past all the drama with the U.S. government. This is him. Um, <clears throat> after the, after, um, I mean, they're filming. The George the, Foreman fight. Right, yeah, for sure. This is eight months after uh, Joe Frazier, the thriller in right, Manila. Right, right. So this is him at the height of his prowess his world yeah. her, his worldwide like renown he's like. making five ten million dollars a fight these right. international governments are paying him to travel the world right yeah he's 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 making money so this he's this match star. this match is super interesting to me because one it's kind of lost in history and ali's just an incredibly compelling character mm -hmm. and um and i'll tell you everything has been done on ali except for this i, mean, I, don't, so I don't know if everything's I, do, I mean so much has been done Films, documentaries, yeah. books. Makes you wonder why this hasn't been done. Whether mm -hmm. people just sort of buy into the reputation that really was fostered through Western media and mostly boxing media that the thing was a joke and mm -hmm. it was a waste of time. And yeah, if you've seen the fight, you know that it wasn't the most compelling thing. But think about people who are watching this in 1976 mm -hmm. on closed circuit, okay, yeah, around the yeah. world. They have no frame of reference for, mm -hmm. for this. They don't know what it is. They don't really even know what they're watching. <laughs>